Creating a niche for your business is not always easy, especially in a competitive environment. But that did not stop Steve Kiindi, our guest on Road to Success. You're watching Road to Success, the key to your next level in business. We're talking to Steve Kienda, the man behind the success of Maxo Cleaning Services. Karibu sana. Santik. Now, Steve, you did a um, forest management degree, and now you, we're here to talking about your company that is cleaning services. How come you're not in the forest and you're cleaning? Maybe in forest management, maybe I can say it was about uh, the parents' idea. It was a parent's idea. Yes, it to go and it's not, it was not about me. So you graduated and gave them the degree. Yes, <laughs> so I decided to do what I think it was right for me, something which is challenging to me. Okay, so your company is a year and a half old. Yes. So take us back to the beginning. How did it start? Actually, my company started with an idea of only cleaning a sofa set and mattress. So if you can see the combination of the, those two names, that's where the name comes from, Matzo Cleaning Services. So the main idea was only cleaning sofa set and mattress. I saw an, in, an inch in cleaning of th those two things because uh, cleaning services right now, in, right now in Kenya, we only see cleaning of big buildings, but we never focused on small, small clients like home cleaning services. And that's why I decided to start with that. But I'm curious, how, how do you start how did you think i mean why are you not for example you know making chapatis or something else why cleaning i had a passion in cleaning even for me where i usually sit i'm very clean so i decided i think this one can i can do something with it and then i just put business touch on it and that's why i started so steve you start the business and you're cleaning um carpets and mattresses but how was this idea born? For the sofa sets, actually it started with, uh, when I was visiting friends, even in the offices. I could see some seats that were very dirty. Even sometimes I could ask the, maybe the cleaners within the office, and how do you deal with, apart from cleaning the floor, how do you deal with office, office seats or sofa sets? Then they could tell me, we don't do nothing because we don't know how to clean them. So that's why the idea of cleaning, sofa set and office seat started. But for the idea of the mattress, that one came from my mom. Because uh, after now acquiring my own machine, I had to start with home first. So I cleaned my mother's sofa sets. Then on the process after finishing cleaning the sofa sets, she asked me if I can clean her mattress. Then I told her that one, I'm not sure but let me try you're talking about having acquired machines yes. and you know from what we see those machines are quite uh, big and quite expensive how did you raise money to start your business so after starting this company first i used to hire machines whereby i could combine the clients maybe for a day so that i can have a, a, at least i can cut the cost of hiring the machine but after doing some, let's say for four months, with what I, the small amount I saved, I had to now to sit down with my parents and talk about it with them. Mm -hmm. But uh, my mom was very supportive and she decided to support me. So she gave me the, 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 the balance for me to acquire the machine. And then after getting that money from her, I went and ordered the machine. So has the mattress um, cleaning grown? Is that something that is popular in Kenya? Because, you know, it's not common to hear people cleaning their mattresses. Actually, I started with uh, doing marketing to hotels, which they took it very positively. But we had to uh, disagree on pricing. But because it was something new in the market, I had to come a little bit lower. 
so that I can do it and see if it's working. What other services do you do? Then on the process, I came to realize steel cleaning is very wide. So I decided to sit down, try to venture into more cleaning services. That's why I came up with water dispenser cleaning. So you open it up? Yeah, you just open it out, up, you dismantle everything. We are talking about the water system itself, from the water up to the final taps. Okay, so that's a special niche. Are there many other people doing the same thing? Maybe I saw in one of our newspapers, there was a, one of the guy was trying to do the same, same thing with me. I'm sure there are other, uh, there's still other products. Of course, there are many. Okay. Yeah, because cleaning is very, very, very wide. We need to take a break at the moment. So when we come back, you'll tell us more about the other services that you offer. You're watching Road to Success, the key to your next level in business. You're watching Road to Success, the key to your next level in business. And we're talking to Steve Kiinda of Maxo Cleaning Services. Yeah. Steve, just before we went to the break, you were talking to us about the different services that you offer. What other unique services are you offering? Currently, I have other unique services. We are talking about roof tiles cleaning because uh, right now people do some innovation in their houses. But what about the roof? They just leave it the way it is. So that one, it's a, another unique services. What is roof cleaning? Is, is you sweep off the leaves or what, what do you do exactly? When you're talking about roof, roof cleaning, yeah. you, you can see the tiles, they usually, they usually change the color. They right. don't have the original, original, the original color. So my work is to make sure I return them to the original color. And I also clean uh, kitchen hoods or chimneys in hotels because uh, I've come to understand like hotels they do have their ch chimneys but they don't clean them and uh, you can argue with them in terms of like they they make they make cause fire or it's an hygiene because once they, there is heat that oil cooking fat can start melting and going back, back to, to food. food yes so that one is an hygiene then apart from those two unique services, I also have clean tanks, water tanks, despite how big they are or how small they are. Because in the house, we usually clean our buckets when, when, when to, once you want to refill the water with them. But what about our tanks? We are talking about on top and underground. We don't clean that because you may say they are very complicated. So you're talking about the outside of the tank? We are talking about inside. So uh, and like apart from cleaning what we have in the house, what about the outside, the, sto the big storage? We don't clean that. So I decided to venture in that and to invest on it. And how often should you, would you advise people to clean their water tank? For tanks, I can say we are talking about uh, you can do it for six, after six months on, or after a year that one is recommended because we, here we are talking about we do in water we do have a lot of what we do have a lot of bacteria in it so the main aim is to make sure we reduce the bacteria in water so that we can live safe and healthy what made you want to clean that chimney the first one ever the first one actually was given a contract to go and clean kitchen floor because there was inspection to be done so in the process while i was cleaning the kitchen floor i saw the kitchen hood then I asked the, the, the owner of the hotel, what about this one? Are you planning to clean this or what? Then he told me, this one we don't clean because we don't know how to clean it. Then I told him, let me, let me try An opportunity see. just yes. yeah, landed. So did it and it was perfect. So I decided to venture in, into cleaning of kitchen wood. Excellent. So what have you encountered as your challenges through this process? Maybe I can say one is capital. Second one, it's about uh, you have to come with new technology to deal with those challenges. Then the other thing, maybe we are talking about employees because we have to get the right employees. What, what is right? What is the right employee? Someone who understands what you want. Some, someone who understands what clients want because you, 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 you don't need to be there to make sure you supervise them. 
because you need some employees who you will give them minimum supervision. And you know that type of work is quite risky because you're sending people to private, you know, premises even. How, how do you ensure that, you know, they're going to perform, deliver and not go there and um, do anything disadvantageous to your company? First, once I decide to employ someone, you have some forms to fill so that at least I, you, I have next of kin, somebody who is countable. Maybe something has, something has happened. And then after there, now you have to work under probation. You don't just start working, you, you have to interact with the, the existing employees. Then from there, now I can get the, the report from the supervisor telling me how you are. And then from there, now I see what next for you. Steve, you've told us you're 27 years old. You're hiring 28 people permanently and 17 casuals. Tell us, what is Steve? How, is, how shall we meet Steve at 70 years? First, I can say like we have a big opportunity outside because right now we have a new government. We are talking about counties. That's one. Then we have East African community or East Africa, Central Africa community. That's another market for us. And then for apart from that, I want to build my own brand because my main aim right now is branding. I want to come up with my own brand whereby I'll be identified by a certain brand. Having worked for a year and a half now and employed all these people, what are your main lessons learned? First lesson I've learned uh, out of this job first, you have to understand your client because in business you don't just go and just give the quotation to the client. The lesson number two I've learned we are talking about have to invest heavily on technology because technology will cut cost and you will you will give the perfect perfect job to the client and the client will be happy with you and what would you advise us in university currently doing some courses and maybe they will not need them <laughs> like you did and what i will advise them education is the key to the to success in life but you should think outside education system don't think about the just passing your exam. Think outside the exam because outside we do have a lot of opportunities for young guys and very with unique business outside. So stop thinking about the certificate only because I'll tell you this for the certificate it's only it will help you to understand the outside after class it will help you understand the world. Steve, I think you are born for such a time as this, where you are making such a huge difference in this economy at such a young age. We wish you all the best. Thanks a lot. For watching Road to Success, the key to your next level in business. Remember, opportunities don't just happen, you have to create them. God bless.